sweet. Oh, I got just started. So yeah, let's just keep chatting. I wanted to know what was like your first political memory. Um, like when you were a kid, or like just the first time you're like, oh, politics. <laughs> yeah, um, it was uh, 2008 election night was my first memory. My my whole family was Obama supporters, and I was like seven years old, so I had no no idea of what was going on but my family was like they were like you know cheering like the good guy won so you know, I, that's cool that was that was my first memory yeah that's really cool gosh yeah mine was like i don't know you just i'm envious of i'm not envious of your generation but like i'm so excited for people like you to come into this with you know a little less wounds than certain people <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I don't know. It's just gotten increasingly polarized over the like since the nineties and like you've seen some crazy stuff, but like I, I just truly believe a lot of where politics is headed is with your generation. Um, just because people are so burnt out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think, you know, I think a big sense that I get with people who've kind of grown up under like, you know, Obama, Trump, and just this era of polarization. That's kind of all you've seen is this culture at war with each other. Yeah. Um I think there's a lot of people that have this sense of like, you know, this this has got to change. This is not like we're not just doing this. This is going to either break or we change it. You know, it's like I hear from so many people. It's either oh I've given up, or I'm going to change it, or you're you're somebody who's already indoctrinated and far left. Far yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what about? I'm curious. So you're sophomore in college. Um, where where are you again? What college? Uh, Southern Connecticut State University. It's in New Haven. Nice. So are people politically active, like in your friend group and your school? Like, are you the, are you kind of the Lone Ranger? <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of the politics nerd. There's a couple people um, that are like, you know, kind of into it the same way I am, but not, not a ton, you yeah. know? Um, but there, there are like, a, uh, there's a few people that are like into it the same way, you know, they can talk about it forever. They know all this stuff about history, you know? Yeah. Do you think yeah. it's because, do you think younger people aren't that interested because of just where they're at in life or because of just the nature of politics? I mean, I think, I think it's both. There's definitely an element of where they're at in their life. Like, you know, young people don't vote as much as older people. And so that's, there's definitely an element of that, but I think politics is, really hard to get into like it's hard to kind of break the ice um especially if you're like a younger person you're not so sure of the world and everything you know it's like it's a mess to get into it's like a whole world of just you know like partisan mudslinging yeah so it's it's not easy or like enticing to get into and especially like even for me like i don't come from politics i i never thought I don't know. I, I just never envisioned myself actually being able to make an impact. But like, I think that's the really special part about Forward Party. It, you know, we're creating leaders, we're creating community leaders and creating opportunities for you know people like you, like young, young voters who are interested to actually have a voice and share your stories. Or, I mean, I don't see the Dems or the GOP doing that at all. No, I don't see any anybody you know any younger generations being like yes i'm gonna be a democrat you know my life my whole life i'm gonna be a republican my whole life like that's not you just look at the leadership like it's the youngest person's like 60 or 70 you know that it's it's an outdated system and it looks like it yeah yeah i'm curious like i don't know maybe we'll see but like in terms of just your your experience with like the 2016 election and like your the reaction from like people around you, people your age, like what kind of, what was that conversation like? Actually, the most surprising thing to me was the next day, like the day after the election going to school, there was a lot of people who kind of, you know, had never said anything before, but then were like, I'm happy Trump won, you know, like screw this system, you know, this is great. Yeah. Um, and like I, that shocked me where I was like, oh, there's, there's something like much bigger here you know there's something else going on here and that yeah that was kind of my biggest reaction of like that shocked me that like it was a lot of people that kind of came out of the woodwork almost you know yeah like so it sounds like kind of that like aha moment for you was like oh wait like people people believe in this like people vote yeah like, there's something here i'm not gonna like vilify them i just need to understand it 
Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, I mean, my kind of thought of it is Biden and Trump voters, like we're 10 years from now, we're still going to be living in the same country. Like we have to make it work. You know, we have to figure out how we're going to be, you know, believe in the same things. If we, you know, I think forward party is an opportunity where you start to find, you know, a Biden voter and a Trump voter supporting the same thing. Yeah. Then that starts to heal the, the division, you know? Yeah, no, totally. And it's like, for me, I've never just my philosophy on everything in life and now politics. It's like, just because let's say you voted for Hillary in 2016, or you voted for Trump, like those were the two options and people have their own reasons. And, you know, maybe people were voting for Trump for the financial reasons. It, it what frustrates me is like the conversation is like, okay, now you're a fascist. Now you're all the things he ended up doing now. And it's like, I, I don't know. It's just frustrating that we have gotten to like this culture war where like, you you inherit all of the sins of the person you voted for and it's just like where we can't we can't live like that yeah i saw i saw this video going around of like a stand-up comic she was doing this set and like ended up getting things things thrown at her this person was like trying to get her kicked out saying like you voted for biden I like saw that. I, I, yeah yes it's, just on uh jimmy kimmel actually saw that video and oh, had yeah. her, uh Ar ariel or something like that was yeah, some, something like that. Yeah, was, and actually it was like, she tweeted back at him saying like, can I do my first debut on your show? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, good, I saw for, good for her. They're just like, she's just telling jokes and like getting ridiculed. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, this is not, you know, this, this isn't sustainable. Like we're, you know, we still have to live together. Yeah. You know, whether we hate each other or not, like, you know, we choose the environment we want to, create that we live in i don't want to live in an environment that is fighting like that yeah and like for me it's kind of like there's something um i don't know i don't know if you have this chip on your shoulder or like have this kind of like kind of rebellious nature but it's like okay i know that a lot of this like hate and all this messaging is being constructed so i'm not going to give into it i'm actually going to be a little bit more like punk rock and hang out with people i disagree with and not yeah that um yeah i don't know if i feel like you have that in you <laughs> i totally have that in me too yeah i um i enjoy hanging out with people who are like extreme left or extreme right and just kind of picking their brains you know it's fun it's like a sport. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's just like honestly at least in my life and i'm curious about for you it's like yes there's a lot of social divide there's a lot of like things i would never bring up at the dinner table with certain people but for the most part if you like with forward party, I think it's like such a great like gateway uh, conversation to get people to like come together. Cause we're not, I'm not telling you how to think. I'm just saying, wouldn't it be nice if we enacted election reform? Like, and then people are like, they have to take a step back from, I'm talking about like people who are really opinionated on the left and right. I've never had a conversation where they're angry about the things that forward party's doing. No. Yeah. No, yeah. I've never, I've never met anybody who says like, you know, they hate what the forward party's doing. They hate the message. Everybody who I've talked to is like on board with it. You know, it's not. You br you bring up something like that, and people have to kind of take a step back because it's a whole different way of thinking. You know, this two sided thinking is so ingrained in our culture and our politics yeah. that like people kind of have to take a step back and reconsider things when you bring up like a third party like hey we could just change the whole system you know right which sounds i don't know I, I feel like this speculation or kind of the apprehension i get from people when i'm talking to them in person as opposed to twitter because everybody's saying the conversation is so different online than it is when you're talking to people in person yeah um, but you know when i'm talking to folks in person they they kind of have some like apprehension of like kind of like good luck or mm -hmm. i've heard a lot especially from uh I don't know, just some people, actually both people on both sides saying like, just don't be a spoiler. But once you're able to explain to them that we're not a spoiler, conversation's great. It's just like the forward party philosophy requires a meaningful conversation like this one. Yeah, no, it requires more than um, social media conversation. I think, you know, these platforms that we use today, like Twitter, just these like short kind of quick messages, it's, it's not good for discussion it's not good for like you know learning it's not good for anything right. it's very you know it kind of minimizes these big ideas into 
very small bite-sized things that you're not going to gain anything from that. It's so true. Um, yeah. I think like, you know, we, we've been having these Twitter spaces, like the ability to talk like that. I think that's great. That's yeah. such a better way is just talking to people. Yeah. Those are, those are wonderful. And even like, we need to bring those back from the forward party um, uh, handle, but yeah, even the ones I've attended where people have gotten a little like angry, it, it always kind of simmers. It's not, I don't know. I just, I truly believe, and maybe I'm just an optimist. I really don't think people are as divided as the media wants us to believe. Um, I know there's a lot of divide, there's a lot of hate and a lot of anger, but you know, I don't know. I just, I love that the forward party conversation really in theory should not anger anyone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, um, I had that same kind of idea. Um, like, you know, I've been doing some writing and researching around like historical context for forward and stuff. And like that, you know, that's not just kind of a sense in people's head. Like it's, it's true um, that these, these parties don't, like they're changing they're changing the narrative we're not mad at each other every day you know half about half of us don't affiliate with either party and so like when you get down to the numbers it's like yes these are minority parties that are fighting amongst themselves like this we're not that's not what the american people are right right and it's i don't know it's just psychological warfare to a degree and that's yeah. why i never I don't know. There's obviously like extreme views that I just detest, but it's like, I, I, for the most part, if there's somebody on the far left or far right who has an idea that has been like fed to them from the mainstream media, I don't view it as their fault. <laughs> like, and that's what makes me really yeah. mad about the two party system is it's, you know, it's teaching people to hate uh, to some degree and it's teaching people that the other side is bad. And that, how is that democracy? How is that good for anything uh, moving forward? Yeah, um, I think that, you know, that's the thing that is so appealing about the forward party to me is it's like we have to change the incentive structure that's making the parties act like this. You know, these parties each represent about 25 percent of the public. And, yeah. so, you know, they're grasping to power. These are they shouldn't have majority power. They represent a minority of people and they're trying to grasp to power. And that's, you know, just the way the incentives are set up. So. Um, I, you know, love the forward parties talking about like, we need to change that so that this is going to work for 40 more years. Right. Because if we keep something I've been researching and like from a branding and messaging perspective, you know, so much of the narrative in politics right now is just uh, finger pointing at a person being like that person's corrupt, that person did this. That, and I view it so differently now, like being in the forward party framework, it's like, yeah, the corrupt people come from a corrupt system. So we're never going to go reach into somebody's heart and be like, be a good person. But if you change the incentive structure, get nonpartisan primaries, get RCV, get different election reform policies, corruption is going to uh, very much like dwindle away because there yeah. are ways to you know play and rig the system. Yeah, I think you know that that's the biggest thing I think the forward party can gain from, you know, and it's messaging saying to people, um, like this, this system isn't working because, because of these very structural things. Like it's not, this person is evil or this party is evil. It's like this, there's these structural things that are designed to, you know, corrupt people right. that are designed to corrupt the people who want to go in and do, you know, make changes. Yeah. Um, so I think that that resonates with a lot of people that a lot of people have this sense that it's not, you know, one president, one party. It's, you know, there's a very big issue here. Right. And it to me, it's like, oh, well, that's something we can fix, right? Like, okay, we can fix a system. I can't fix how a person thinks, right? I mean, you can and you can't, but like, yeah, no, totally. What, so I was curious, what is, is there like one like particular issue or uh, policy that you are, I don't know, that you really want to see fixed? Like, you know, is it climate change? Like, do you have anything like that that you're really passionate about um, and that you think the forward party can be a great vehicle for actually getting some solutions? I mean, um, above all, just, you know, voting reform. I'm, you know, right there with you that I think this is 
like this has to come before anything else because all you know all these other policy objectives that we have just can't happen until there's voting reform so i'm you know in the first place i'm totally agree that that's number one and that's you know in my mind that's number one above everything else yeah. um but beyond that i you know i care about these a lot about these things uh like you know, I think our spending on the war on drugs and the war on terror are both two things that are just like, if we just cut these out, those fi that fixes so much. If we, you know, cut out the hundreds of billions of dollars we send to private defense contractors and stop imprisoning hundreds of thousands of people every year for, you know, possession of marijuana, that fixes a lot of, like, you know, just getting rid of these kind of key things that are damaging people's lives right now right you know and it's like the i don't know i those issues really they're going to keep being utilized as messaging tactics in the two-party system like well yeah we'll do it we'll do it we'll do it and sure there's like little progress being made here and there on certain things but ultimately from at least my experience and what i see i don't see any real meaningful change happening on any yeah. of these topics that people campaign on no neither do i i mean i you know i think the with the legalization of marijuana for example that's been done by states you know the federal government is still still behind on that you know they it's still technically federal law that that's illegal right. um and then you know with the war in afghanistan ended last year and then the pentagon budget went up again like it that that didn't drop the budget at all you know like there's something wrong there right and it's like for issues like that it's just it just feels like it, they kind of solve it but not all the way because they're like well mm -hmm. we can use this to campaign <laughs> it's like yeah uh, it's so frustrating yeah no and that you know that whole thing is i i'm totally engaged with forward party because i'm just like it's hopeless we're you know thinking about like trying to work within one of these two parties or trying to make these two parties work it's like that that's just not going to happen right yeah um this is like a big like kind of strategic question but what do you <laughs> think would you know what would make somebody who's like unengaged in their early 20s maybe like late teens like what would make them be like oh forward party's cool like I don't know like we're like and this is kind of like a selfish question because i'm in marketing but like you know what what are we missing what are political parties missing in terms of uh engaging the young vote um <laughs> <Great one. laughs> yeah <laughs> um let's see i think i think um it's you know there's kind of a mix of things a lot i think one of the biggest things is that young people don't young people feel like they're being lied to by the two parties you know whichever it is, if you're listening to trump speak or biden speak it feels like there's 10 layers of you know bs that you have to cut through to be like all right what what do you mean what are you actually going to do you know what do you um i think that just straightforward honesty you know as the forward party is talking with people engaging with people you know just not thinking about how is this going to be perceived how is that how is this you know group of people going to respond to this word that we word choice you know i think just people want straightforward honesty right now people want you to just tell them what's going on tell them you know be honest about instead of thinking you know well, this problem, you know, take the war on drugs or something. It's a decade, decades long problem. Instead of thinking, you know, like, wow, how do we kind of approach this massive thing? And then, you know, you as you get into that, you start thinking, well, I have to, you know, I'm doing my best. You know, we did this, we did that. And then you just start defending the like piecemeal things you've done. Yeah. You know, just people want straightforward honesty. And I think that's the biggest, one of the biggest things. Yeah, it kind of sounds like, it's just a lot of work for, I don't know. If you're kind of like not bought into anything political and you're listening to something, it's like almost too much work to decipher what a politician's trying to say and what yeah. they're actually, what they actually mean. And like, we nobody has time for that. Like y'all just came out of 
you know, and I'm talking about like Gen Z, like you came out of the pandemic, you had the weirdest experience ever, like being like in school still, or, and then your like formative years and having to be stuck inside. Like, you don't have time for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's exhausting. Yeah, no, I think, um, I think, you know, that it's this kind of idea of accessibility, like making polit how to make politics more accessible to people. And I think the Forward Party has a real, real opportunity to do that where, you know, if we just can say, you know, we can have straightforward discussions, we can be honest with each other, you can advocate for this far right position, and you can advocate for this far left position, and it's okay, we can, you know, shake hands and go home afterwards. It's like, it's a safe space for conversations. Yeah. With, and like, not just like a, I don't know, but what I think is cool too, it's like, yes, we can have these conversations, but, you know, we're not going to breach the policy solution in the conversation, but the outcome is one, mutual understanding, more, uh, like, I, I think people forget how valuable it is to just hear someone else's perspective, uh, even if you don't agree. You, you'll think about that when you're, you know, talking about it again with somebody else. Like you'll have that uh, rhetoric in your head of like, okay, but this is how other people think about this issue instead of always talking to people who agree with you. Like that's so, that's so unhealthy. Yeah, no, you, you know, it makes you better able to speak to other people and just to understand, you know, where people are coming from. I mean, no, you know, nobody's holding a political belief because they think it's a fascist belief. Nobody's like, yeah, I'm a fascist. Yeah. You know, like they're holding they're holding these beliefs because there's like a series of things that happened that led them to believe this is the right choice, you know? That's so true. And that could be a, a million other things. Like for me growing up, I grew up in Ohio, super conservative Republican family. It was just like, oh, I vote Republican. Like it was like, no question. Like, yeah. well, as soon as I could vote, and maybe I'm just lazy, but it was just like, oh, that's what you do. Because there is like a family dynamic sometimes. Um, and then, you know, I went off to college, went, moved to Austin, Texas, came back pretty liberal. <laughs> like, yeah, like my parents' worst nightmare. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, it meant you just inform your decisions as you go. But it's like, I've, I've met some, when I was in Austin, I got really close with some people who are very liberal. And then when 2016 happened, it just my it was a mind blowing experience because it was like, oh, I, I kind of understood how it happened because like I know a bunch of Republicans. A lot of my friends in Austin had never, they don't know Republicans. They were like, yeah, they're like I could never be in the same room with somebody who voted for this guy. And I'm like, well, then you can't hang out with anybody in my family or my, you know, and I'm like, that's yeah. just, like, that's not the way to view this. The way to view this is like, how did this happen? And like, how are people thinking? And, you know, how do we figure out how to move past this like old man contest that politics has become every four years? It's just frustrating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it it is. I mean, I'd love to see you know that I loved to see Yang on the debate stages just because he he brought this energy. You know, he would like run laps around these candidates. They're like, you know, up there reading these prepared speeches that they've read a hundred times over the past ten years. You know, and he's like, it's never changed their message. Yeah, and then he would just like go. Up, he'd just be like, tell it how it is. You know. Yeah, I think I I don't know. I'm excited to see more people come out of the woodwork to be that refreshing type of candidate and um i don't know i'm already like foreseeing into your future like i could see you i could see you running or something <laughs> uh, that would be uh that would be pretty cool i mean i'm you know not quite at that stage yet but <laughs> <laughs> something to think about um yeah so like 2020 that like uh january 6 all of that can you walk me through kind of like your mindset, like how your friends reacted, like what was that experience like for you? Well, I, um, I was actually with my, um, with my friend at the time, and her dad was, uh, like you know, far right, believed this stuff, and so, you know, my first, first time kind of talking about it is like, oh wow, like did you hear about that? And he was like, yeah, man, the revolution's happening, like here it is, you know. And then two hours later, he was saying it was Antifa, actually. So it was oh. an interesting decision, interesting day, but yeah, it was, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I think in 2020, I kind of had this mindset of like, I, I was almost in shock a little bit, like watching it just kind of almost entertained in a sense of like, wow, this is like out of my control. Let's just like watch what happens, you know? Yeah. It was strange. Um, 
you know, and then, and then I was just kind of in the mindset of like, you know, people are telling people around me like, Hey, this, this isn't going away. Like this isn't a fluke. Like this is going to happen in four years again, probably, you know, like we've, we should, we should do something, you know? Yeah. It's, I mean, totally it's cyclical and like something yeah. that can't be ignored. I felt the same way though. It was just like, this is, I was shocked, but also like, well, of course, like half the country or however many people, like they think the election was stolen. Like, it's just, I don't know. There's so many things where you're like, they've been told to think this. Shocked, but not surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Like, wow. We did like, we really lost the plot America, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, I, I think that, you know, the, that whole thing just, it it all just you know made, makes me double down on like forward party because I look you know it's like well one side is doing this one side is actively trying to take down you know the our representative democracy and then the other side is like kind of sitting on their hands you know they're they're not they don't seem to you know they they're acting like nothing's wrong they're acting like this is just another election like you know oh this is just how it is and it's like well this is just gonna break at some point then there's no nobody like trying to fix it totally and it's like for me being a former democrat i just was kind of sick of um it started to feel like the democrats were becoming the party of oh let's watch and see what the right does when they do something bad we're just going to campaign on being the opposite of that and i'm like yeah what like <laughs> yeah it doesn't make sense no it felt you know like i if I think both parties just turned into these cults where it's like, you know, they represent this minority of people and um, like, you know, 2016, the Republican party turns into this cult of personality mm -hmm. and then the democratic party just makes its own cult to respond. Yeah. It's, it's gotta stop. And I think what we're doing with forward party is so important. And like, we're just so lucky and grateful that you, you found us. So how did you, was it through Andrew, like supporting his yeah. people? Yeah, I um I followed him back, you know, 2019 I found about uh, found out about his campaign, I think. Um and I followed him since then, you know, I after he ended his campaign, I was like I can't wait to see what this guy does next. Like, you know, the, he's he's on to something here. Yeah. Um and you know, yeah, been on board with Forward since day one. I'm like this this is this was needed 5 years ago, you know. Yeah. Totally. I mean, similar story for me too i it's like once somebody makes sense in politics you you kind of latch on like oh mm -hmm. like when you feel like oh they actually that's a real person and they're talking to me like you were saying you know what gen z what younger vote voters want it's authenticity and i think um andrew just like cultivates that with everything he works on so yeah yeah that's you know that's the overall vibe i i've gotten from listening to him is like he's authentic like he's in this because he wants to you know improve this country and i think i think he's a great you know person to lead this party because he's kind of like that happy warrior you know if he's not he's not worried about his ego i i think it's good you know that he's not trying to worry about like his own political future like he's just rolling his sleeves up you know i have a lot of respect for him for sure no totally i think I think it's just amazing the people he's brought in too. I mean, the fact that we were able to merge with two other organizations, like that's unheard of. And um, yeah, and like, we're just getting started. That's what's exciting too. Like when they, when I um, was interviewing, they're like, this is like a 10 to 15 year project, like buckle yeah. up. Like this, <laughs> that's what like makes me like overwhelmed, but also like really excited. Cause it's like, when you're doing something for the first time, you know, what do you have to lose? Like we just have to yeah. do it. We have to try our best. We have to be honest, and we have to work together. And we're gonna slip up, but you know, this if if it's not the forward party, I don't know what it's gonna be. Yeah, I'm kind of on the same page with that. You know, I think it, it's, you know, I I think there's, I don't I don't see any other movement that can is being honest about the solutions that can, you know, really fix this over a ten to fifteen year period. And I think it's almost it's kind of freeing like getting involved with this movement and thinking like you know the sky's the limit like this we're just we're just gonna build it because yeah. it has to happen yeah and i just think it's like it just inspires me so much just to see you know 
people like you, like a lot of our supporters, volunteers, just, you know, like we want to elevate you. This is not about, you know, it's not about Andrew. It's not about Ford National. It's not about us. It's about you. It's about everybody who's spending their time. You know, you're, you're a bartender, right? Like you have a job and you're in school. Yeah. And, and you find time to do this. Like that's, that's what this is all about. Um, and yeah, we're just super, super grateful to have found you or you found us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love that that's kind of the, the way this movement has evolved um, is that it's, you know, the, all the leaders of the forward party are all just saying like, you're the leaders, you know, you lead. Like, I, I love that, that it's, you know, the, the people who are kind of at the helm of this, get it. They know, you know, it seems, I get the sense at least that they get it and they're trying to build something that people are going to invest themselves in and, you know, you invest in your future. Yeah. And I mean, that that's kind of the whole premise of Ford Party right there. We just want to give, like, the parties don't own your vote, you own your vote. Mm -hmm. uh, the parties and the politicians don't own how you view uh, a hot topic policy issue, you do. And so, and I don't know, like, even the way you want to talk about issues, that's up to you. Like, the ownership needs to be put back to the voter, to the supporter. And right now, at least from, you know, my experience being a former Democrat, like, it was like, no, you believe these things. Like you're a Democrat, you believe this. It's like, well, you can't tell me that. <laughs> like, yeah, you need to earn my trust. You need to earn my vote, and you, I'm never going to be told that. Here's your, you know, here's your list of things you have to agree because you put a D next to your name. Yeah, I, th I think it's not. I mean, what it is is it's like it's a system that resembles authoritarianism, and like that's where it's headed. If you know, if it, we don't turn it around, because that's what kind of what it is it's you know your leaders saying this is what you're going to believe and you're going to get on board yeah. um and that's just not that's not what the people of this country are like i mean i you know i remember i'm 21 years old and i can already remember you know like when i was growing up you'd hear about you know people are socially liberal or fiscally conservative or vice versa you know a lot of that's how like voters would kind of define themselves and that like where's the party for those people right that's that's how most people are and that's not available that's not represented you know right and that and that's what when people are voting they're kind of giving up part of their belief system because those are the only options yeah well i don't like that trump did this but i like that like you know it's just we're not giving the not we the political duopoly the two major parties are not really allowing the voter to own any part of this anymore and we ought to fix that yeah no, and that that's exactly what has to be fixed. You know, it's these these part the solution isn't going to come from these parties. These parties are, you know, they resemble corporations. You know, it's just top down. They tell you what you're gonna what you're gonna believe, and they're not gonna change anything, and you're gonna vote for them again, you know? Yeah. And I mean, it's a it's tricky, like getting I don't know, I I'd like to believe even the people that like are always in the headline news. It's like, they're just a part of the system. I don't think that any one person, you know, wants to be a part of something that's so dysfunctional. It's just like, that's all, that's all we've had for so long. And so it just creates narratives around probably really good people who just get swooped up in it. And I don't know, I just admire a lot of the people from, like a lot of forward party members have like, you know, they're disaffected members from like GOP and the Democrats and they worked in politics. They worked in DC and they left and they just talked about how hard it was. And I'm like, I just want to make the, I want to make the pathway to forward and other options just a lot easier for people. And it's just, it's a beast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I love the party's idea of, you know, starting local and building the base that way. And I think it makes, it makes it seem a lot more manageable if it's like, you know, right now we're electing local officials and by 2024, we have 5,000, you know, that, that makes it seem much more manageable where it's like, we can do that. And then once we have that, you know, well, nobody's tried this before. So again, like the sky's the limit, you know? Yeah, no, totally. Just, so much yeah. start, start local too. Cause like at the end of the day, RC, like the policies that we support in terms of election reform, voting reform, those make the biggest impact locally in some cases you know congress isn't gonna fix the pothole in your driveway uh your local elected officials will and i don't know it's just it's really cool to see 
such like so many younger voices come through um, at the local level who we've endorsed from the forward party. And it, I don't know, I'm just really hopeful for the first time in a really long time when it comes to where we're headed. So, yeah. Yeah. No, so am I. Um, and I think, you know, from a kind of strategy standpoint, that's there's a great opportunity where, you know, if the forward party has these local officials all around the country, and they're like, you know, fixing roads, fixing bridges, they're doing a great job. Like you, you, be, you kind of become the party of getting shit done, you know, yeah. in contrast to the two parties. And so that there's a big, there's a lot of opportunity with like local races, I think. Yeah, totally. More in my get shit done shirt. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just, I have a couple more questions for you, but. Yeah, okay. Um, what are you like most, such a cheesy question but i am curious where do you see forward party in like five years five ten i don't know like what do you what do you envision for the long-term future of forward party i think there's um i think people underestimate the chance that this party has to take off quickly yeah. um i think that you know, polls have shown very consistently that over half of us want a third party, about half of us don't identify with either party. Um, so I think, you know, first of all, just people are underestimating the chance that this takes off very quickly. Um, but, you know, beyond that, five, 10 years from now, I think, you know, if it, we, it looks, I think our system looks a lot more diverse at that point because if you have ranked choice voting in more places if you have nonpartisan primaries in a bunch of states those are all states where any third party can now compete independents can now compete yeah. and so that's what's really exciting to me about this is thinking like you know 10 years from now we could have five different party coalitions in congress and they're forced to work together to get things done because no one party has a majority yeah. um i think that you know, that's the thing that's really excited to me because, you know, I'm it's like we were talking about before how the two parties just have this like set of beliefs and they tell you to believe them. You know, I I'm libertarian in some ways. I'm progressive in some ways. Like I my beliefs are kind of all over the place. And so I want like a libertarian party, a progressive party. A, you know, I want like all of these different ideas to be represented, not just because, you know, I'm not left or right. I I just want this to work, you know? Yeah, no, that's so true.